Hi, it's me again with Corel Draw Tips and Tricks, and this is another video on how to uh, make this pin box. It's I just made this this morning, and it's only uh, 9.14 uh, Central Standard Time, so I did it, started pretty early, and, and knocked, and drew it, drew part of it last night, finished drawing it this morning, and uh, couldn't wait to get out there to do it, but this video is going to be how to make this and um, I'm going to post the, the file on in Corel X3 for more people to use and on Epilogue's Facebook page and another Facebook page uh, if you're not a member of Epilogue's Facebook page uh, you might want to join or you, you can visit it and still probably grab the file but anyway, this box is, I think, the best one I've made. You can see the other ones in the background that I made over the last couple of days. It's got a good, clean look. It's it's uh, tight. This is the bottom. This is the top. It's actually got dividers in it. And I actually, when I was designing it, I designed a thicker top that would be glued on right on here. But I actually like the look without it. I think it looks pretty good without it and uh, a little more unique. But anyway, here's the file and uh, it's got all the parts to it. Now, a couple of things I did not use. We got a double word there. I did not use the bottom outside. Uh, the bottom outside is a little bit bigger. I was going to have a lip that on the bottom that equaled the top but I actually like the way it came out the way it looks on the you know sitting on the counter it, uh, it looks good and clean you could use the bottom so there's the bottom this is the inside this is the inside part right here that makes the divider this is the top that's in this picture that I did not glue on it'd be very easy to glue on these are your two inside uh, dividers that go all the way down from top to bottom and this is your uh, the rim of it I guess and of course you don't have to use Epilogue's uh, logo but I thought since I'm a big Epilogue fan I would do it so all you'd have to do is just ungroup it and then grab that logo and get it out of the way now to put that in the center I draw everything in the center of the page so normally I would draw, I would just put this, I would regroup this and put it in the center of the page. But because of the fact that these male tabs are sticking out past it, it's not going to put it in the center of the page. So one thing you can do is take your two point line and just go from like that node, because those things are in the center, that node to that node, and that node to that node. So now this is your center. So all I had to do to get epilogue in that center is just put it in the center and then zoom in, use my nudge factor. We can get a little bit closer than that. But then just use your nudge factor up and down to get it in the center. And there you go. Now, I would, before you cut this piece out, this piece takes quite a bit to cut, probably 10 minutes to cut out. I would engrave it first and uh, make sure you remove these lines because I draw in a hairline. I would engrave it first and then run your job. You can actually run the cut job and then uh, pick out your logo while you're while it's running and, and center it and then just engrave it. Just don't move your wood. But I went ahead and included the two test tabs. I've showed in a couple other videos how to make these test tabs so you don't have to waste this whole piece of wood. Now these dimensions might not be perfectly right for yours. I actually had a little bit of problem with this. The plywood I was using, eighth inch plywood, birch plywood, had some knot holes in it. And on a piece this big with this many cuts, you get a little knot hole and it won't cut all the way through on a regular run. So I actually had to sand the whole thing down. I have the luxury of having a drum sander and I sanded the backside pretty unique because it's so fragile but it was still in its it was still in its piece of wood that I cut it out of so I ran it through the sander on the backside and 
basically sanded those knots away till it got to the cut. So mine is probably only a sixteenth of an inch thick. So these measurements are for mine. So what I would suggest is to cut this out and then use these tabs and make your shape. These are really, really tight. So they press together and you might even have to actually have to hammer them down a little bit. And then I would just, uh, the next thing you're going to do is put your tabs in here. There's a tab here and a tab here on one side. And then this is your other tab. I would put your tabs in next. Now these tabs on this one are particularly tight, but I'm a big believer in sanding. Some of you don't sand. You're going to need to, to make these fit for my box. You're going to make them, you're going to have to sand off a little bit because it's, I, I set it for uh, 0.12 thickness of the wood and the wood's actually uh, 0.125. So a little bit of sanding, they fit really tight in these joints and that's your divider. So I would put your dividers in next before you put your bottom in. Now these dividers are an eighth of an inch short of the total height in both directions. And that is for the lid. The bottom lid will fit inside that eighth inch groove and it actually gives you something to glue to and then the top will fit in there. So then after this is in, these, these supports are setting on top of those tabs. So that's why they're a quarter of an inch, they're a quarter inch shorter, so an eighth of an inch on both sides. I, so I would cut it out and then maybe use a caliper to see what your measurements are. And if they're not, my box was actually uh, two point Four. Yeah, it was 2.4 across. So this is actually 2.4. And let's just measure it and see what it says. 2.4. <clears throat> so my tabs make it a little bit bigger. So I would measure with some calipers because if you're using eighth inch plywood, it might it might be a little bit too tight. You know, it might bow it out a little bit. So you could always reduce these in in depth or in width across here. Same thing on these on the inside. These would be very easily to change. Let's just make a duplicate of that. Pull it out of the way. Let's zoom in here. And since I took off, and so this piece is just a solid piece, and this is what I would test with. Go to effects, contour, contour to the inside, um, 0 0.06. 2.5, hit apply, and then that, well, you know what, you'd actually have to go to the outside, because my box is a little a little uh, thinner than yours, maybe going to be, so you might, you know, then you break the contour apart, so you might want to test that, and just put it down in your box, and see, you actually test the black one, I, when I contour, I have it set on black, so I know which one's the, the, uh, outside one so I would test that after you after you snap these together and if yours aren't extremely tight uh, on these joints you can uh, lay them down on a board on a flat surface hang a board over the edge of your table or workbench and get them flat and use just a couple of drops of CA glue and let it dry but uh, they're extremely tight so they they should work and then <clears throat> put these tabs in and, and just see if it doesn't bow out the edges then if it doesn't, try that, try both these maybe. Anyway, I hope that helped.